Are you a businesswoman who is finding it challenging to get your ideas across and make a point? Welcome to Speakers Who Get Results with Elizabeth Bachman, a podcast dedicated to helping women get the visibility they want, whether making a speech or talking in a meeting. Every week, get valuable lessons from Elizabeth or learn from her roundtable conversations with experts and speakers on how to make a difference, not just a point. On to the show with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. Hello, and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results and uh, the Strategic Speaking for Results. I do that every time. My question for you today is, are you erasing yourself from the picture? Over and over, I hear, I'm taken for granted at work. They don't notice me. They talk over me. It's like I'm invisible. Now, there are men that this happens to, but today I'm mostly talking to women and why women get talked over at work or not listened to. And yes, it might be because your colleagues aren't paying attention, but also it might be something that you are doing in a way that you are sabotaging yourself. So uh, for those of you who are just tuning in. I'm Elizabeth Bachman. I'm an international opera director and presentation skills trainer. I'm the CEO of Strategic Speaking for Results and the host of Speakers Who Get Results podcast. And as an international presentation skills trainer, what I do mostly is work with high level women who are hitting a glass ceiling and not being taken seriously, not not showing up at work. Now, there are many reasons why women are taken for granted or ignored in meetings, and um, much of it might have to do with the people who aren't listening. Today, I want to talk about the part that comes from the inside, where women aren't showing up. I'm especially passionate about this because I spent years, I wasted years, waiting to be recognized for my good work. I did well, I shone, I was in my opera career, people knew me as someone who, who created good, solid, well done productions. But it didn't translate into the kind of career I really wanted because I didn't market myself right because, you know, that would be bragging, and good girls don't brag. At least that's what my mom told me. So today I want to talk a little bit about how women sabotage themselves without even realizing that they're doing it. This is particularly top of mind for me because over the last several months, I've been working with a client named Evelyn. That's not her real name, but uh, Evelyn, worked for a very famous company. And about five years ago, she saw the opportunity for a partnership deal with another very famous organization. And she convinced the people at her company that it was possible. People didn't believe it at first. And then she and her team worked for five years to pull it together. And this summer, the deal was launched. She'd worked all this time. It was her idea. It was her baby. The problem is, when it came time to do the speeches and all the media interviews for launching this, the PR team sent the media to someone at her company who had had only been there for two months, who had nothing to do with the project, had a title, but nothing to do with the project, and they forgot to ask Evelyn. Well, that's when Evelyn called me, and she was furious. She said, here's this thing, I've given five years of my life to it, and they've taken me for granted. They're not listening. And what we realized when we started working together is that she had done the good thing, the expected thing, of constantly talking about how great her team was. Everything about how wonderful the team was, and the team did this, and the team did that. And she never actually reminded people that it was her idea, 
and that she was leading the team. So when the time came to do the media interviews, she sort of expected that, that she would be the person who was called on because she knew she was doing it, right? She knew that she was the point person. But the PR team, the marketing department, forgot about her. She was kind of blended in with the team. So what we finally did was we worked on ways that she could talk about this project once it had launched just by making one or two little tiny, tiny changes to what she did. We worked on ways that she could say things like, I'm so glad the deal went through. This is going to be a huge benefit for everybody. You know, when I had that idea five years ago, nobody thought it would happen. And I'm so glad that the team was, that the team who worked for me, worked for me, remember? The team who worked for me did so well, et cetera. Or for a lot of the new people, because it was, a, her companies had a lot of turnover. She would say, yeah, you weren't there. You weren't there when I first had this idea and proposed this idea, but Oh, people didn't believe it was going to happen. And I'm so glad it's come through because look, everyone's going to take it for granted now that this is what we do. We are the pioneers for this. And I'm so glad to have my team, such a great team. So she mentioned that it was her idea. And then she went on to credit the team for all the work they did. The key was she told the story. I don't know if you've ever been there. If you've been working on something and you're putting in extra hours and sort of in the back of your mind, you expect that you're going to be rewarded for all the time you've put in and all the hard work you've done. And yet, when it comes time to publicize it or give raises and promotions, nobody notices you. I mean, this happened to me. It happens to a lot of women. I actually even remember... Back in the 80s, there was a, a flyer that would I saw on many an office wall and many a copy in, in many a copy room that talked about the six phases of a project. Google it, you can still see it. But phase number six is praise and rewards for the non-participants. Because the people who actually think about it, if you haven't talked about it, and if you haven't talked about it in the right way, then yeah, there will be praise and rewards for the non-participants. That happened to me in my years in the opera. I learned this the hard way and I never could figure out why and what happened. It wasn't until now the work that I'm doing now that I now see what I should have done. So what can you do? As I said, some of the things that Evelyn talked about, we talked about little ways of of mentioning that was her idea. The other important thing is to make sure that the right people hear. So she went to the marketing department and said, hey, you know, this was my project. I'm wondering why you gave all the media interviews to this manager, to the chief marketing officer, who's only been here for two months. And they didn't really have a good idea. They didn't really have a good answer. And she said, well, you know, this is my baby, this is my thing, and I would like to have some of those interviews. She also talked to the chief marketing officer, who, to give her credit, said, yeah, this is your thing. You've been working on this for five years. I don't know why they sent this to me. I don't know anything about this. So she got a buy-in from the chief marketing officer. And I'm happy to say that just recently, there was a big announcement an industry group had given an award to Evelyn's company and the company that they partnered with for this new way of doing a presentation. And there was a big, there was a TV special on it and there she was the spokesperson for her company. So it did work out finally after a lot of pain. Now, you may be thinking, yeah, but how can I improve my visibility without bragging, without being obnoxious? I mean, it is definitely a tightrope. I get it, especially for women who, 
if you if your thought of being self-promoting, if your thought of being arrogant, uh, there's a much higher penalty for that for women than there is for men. I like what Ruth Bader Ginsburg said: "Fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that makes people want to join you." One of the great ways you can do this is tell stories, concise stories, but tell stories that show how your accomplishments benefit the company. If you only say, oh, well, I did this and I did that, then yeah, that comes off as bragging. But if you phrase it in a way that gives you credit, credits your team, and focuses on how good this is for the company, then you can plant the seed in people's minds that you are a crucial part of the project and should get a crucial part of the recognition. Secondly, or maybe first, make sure you know who you're speaking to. Make sure you know that, make sure that the people who need to know hear these things that you're saying. It's fine if your team knows that you're doing all the work, but, uh, if upper management doesn't, or the board, you've got to actually tell people. It's hard to remember to do this. I get it, you know, we get involved in our day-to-day -day things. It's hard to remember this. So the key to that is find allies. Get two or three people who are your buddies, either within your company or outside your company, and have them remind you to tell people, put it in your port about the idea you had and how things worked. This is a big part of what we do in the Visible and Valued Mastermind for Executive Women, is we put together a cohort of no more than eight or 10 women who can tell each other how great they are. Because it's hard to recognize yourself and your own accomplishments. But if you have allies, and if you have people who remind you to put it on your calendar to send the report, talk about what you're doing, or when you're doing a report, to talk about the part that you thought of, then you can do this. Now, granted, there's an art to this. It's uh, challenging. If you're not quite sure how to do this, please reach out to me because this is a huge part of my work. I do this with a lot of my clients to help them position themselves. Thirdly, practice your stories. Practice the way you're gonna talk about it. Get someone to listen to you so it doesn't sound too salesy or too arrogant. Make sure that there's somebody who can give you informed feedback not someone who can say, oh yeah, yeah, that was fine, but someone who actually really knows how to listen. You know, a, a speaker trainer, me for instance, or someone like that. Get someone who can listen and give you good feedback so that you can use this as a sound bite. I've talked a lot on these broadcasts about sound bites and how they are best done. The thing, to particularly think about is, is to use these, drop these phrases, the phrases that you say all the time, drop them into conversation in a way that sounds just right. And you may have to write it three or four times. Write it, say it out loud, polish it, say it out loud. You will hear if it doesn't sound quite right. And practice, because you're going to use these sound bites over and over again. Uh, I learned about all of this in my opera career as a stage director. And I was an international stage director. I was constantly doing good work, good solid work where there were productions that really hung together and everybody had a great time with it. They enjoyed it. I pulled the best out of each person to pull them towards their personal best. And over and over on opening nights, the choristers would come up to me and say, we loved this. We loved this production. We loved this process. I hope you come back. And, and the extras would say this. And the stagehands would say this. And the soloists would say this. Which was great for my ego, but it didn't get me further bookings. 
It didn't get me jobs. Because in those days, I didn't understand how to play the politics. I thought just doing a really good job and having everybody love me was going to be good enough. I wasn't thinking in the terms of a general director until I started running an opera company. And by that I was by then I wasn't really directing anymore. If I had known then how to promote myself in a way that was authentic, humble, showed my value to the company, I might have I might be still be directing operas. Well, anyway, that was that was a, I'm still carrying the pain from those uh, those lessons and when I finally learned this that's a big part of what motivates me now to be passionate about helping women claim their power and speak up because I didn't know how to do it and my opera career ended you know I had to go off and do something else because I didn't know how to promote myself right so um please learn from my mistakes here's one more important thing ask ask to present ask for the interview ask to be part of the presentation if it is if even if you are part of the team and low down on the totem pole you could do a piece maybe you could present a piece of the presentation a section the thing is this is why i care so much about presentation skills is the more you're out there speaking the more credibility you have the more credibility you have the more you are asked to speak and the more people look at you and say ah she knows what she's doing let's ask her to do this new thing the problem is so many women hide behind their computers they do a really good job they spend all their time taking care of their team you know it's all just caretaking and they forgot they forget to take care of themselves and they forget to actually ask for the opportunity and then when an opportunity comes around many women wait until they're 150% prepared and the opportunity passes them by and someone who's ready to just go for it gets the opportunity instead and then 6 months later you wonder why you're never asked to give the speech i talk to conference managers and podcast hosts all the time from all over the world and often when i find especially if it's a business podcast i will look at the list of the guests and i'll say how come you've got 90% men and only 10% women in your and your guests and over and over the answer is is because the women don't raise their hands the women don't reach out and say yes i want to so please i beg of you this is my if anything else i could say ask for the opportunity to present ask for the be the person who speaks put yourself out there the more you do it the easier it will be for other women to see that it is possible for women to do this the more it will be easier it will be for men to see that yes of course women have power women have a voice this is really important something that i am incredibly passionate about if you are interested this is just the tiniest piece of a very large subject if you're interested in more reach out to me here on social media or to elizabeth at elizabethbachman.com and i can help you talk about what it is that you want to do but please don't erase yourself from the picture we have just concluded another great episode of speakers who get results with your host elizabeth bachman if you got value from today's episode please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues you may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes and thanks for tuning in.